All right, all right. Your your tag name on TikTok, on TikTok is Huckleby, right? Yeah, Huckleby 3406. All right, all right. Huckleby in the building. All right, my yo, G. Yo. Hey, thank you. Uh thank you for stepping up into the building, man. I really do appreciate that. Um Oh yeah. No problem, no problem. All right, so before we start, man, let's hear your bad story. Where uh where where did you come from before you got in the trucking, yo? Alright, uh before I got in the trucking, man, I graduated high school in two thousand seven. Uh, I used to do like little side work while I was in school and playing football with my granddaddy. So after I graduated high school, got my CDL and drove school buses for about three or four years. And then I said, you know what? It's time for me to basically do something different with my life because these kids about to make me catch the charge, man. And so um, I went to South Georgia Tech, got my license upgraded, and um, September 2011, I um, went over to Swift, did a year and a half there, also was a trainer over at Swift, and I was on uh, two or three different dedicated accounts with Swift, and then left there in April of 13, started with a small carrier, stayed there for two months, and then went somewhere else, and I've been here ever since June of 2013. All right, man. So uh, let's uh, let's peel it back for a little bit. Uh, your phone your phone puts you up in the great state of Minnesota. That's where you at? That's yeah. where you're from? That's, no, that's not where I'm from. I'm from South Georgia, from Plains, Georgia, home of the Saturday Night President. But okay. uh, I decided okay. to change my number to a Minnesota number to keep folks out of my pocket. Oh, uh, try to. Oh, okay, okay. But you do you stay up in Minnesota? Cause I I fuss with Minnesota, I man. No, I don't really stay up here. Cause I need to move up here. Cause I mean, the folks I work for, they've been begging me for the past nine years to basically move up here. And I'm like, nah. The winners up here just way too disrespectful, yeah, man. I yeah, can't yeah, really. The, yeah, the winners. I can't really vibe with it up there. Yeah, the winners up in now Minnesota. Now and then, I gotta. Brutal. Oh yeah. Not only that, I got a three-year-old son, and I'm a season ticket holder for the Falcons, so I don't be able to really handle that, man. All right, you you are what for the Falcons? Season ticket holder. Oh, you're a season ticket holder for the Falcons. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, down sir. In, down in Georgia, Atlanta Falcons. All right, that's what's up, man. That's yes, what's sir. Up. All right, man, so you, you, you mentioned that you got your license – upgraded uh mm -hmm. tip a little bit on that so you 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 had your cdl what what was it a class b or or what what, what do you mean by that yes uh, it was basically a class b so after i graduated high school in uh may of 2007 i had basically applied to work for the local school system that i was a part of and so they basically helped me get my class b license so I had my class B CDL with my passage in school for the endorsement. So I did that for four years, basically from 07 to 2011. So September 2011, I enrolled at uh, South Georgia Technical College to their uh, truck driving school out there. And so I basically had to go get my uh, my learner's permit for my class A's. And really all I had to do was just basically take the combination test just to get the class A's. And then I went out there for about five and a half weeks. Got them upgraded, and then in uh, September of uh, 2011, I applied to go to Swift. All right. So, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf. That said, you 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 got your CDL while you was right at the high school. So you was uh like yeah, a what? Weeks after high school. So you was like what a bus uh you know a school bus driver, right? Yeah. Oh man, what's what's some of the yeah. what, what's some of the crazy stories you could tell us uh, during your time as a school bus driver? Because we. I just seen oh. a, I, I just seen a video of a horrifying accident. Well, actually, it wasn't horrifying. The first one showed. I don't know if you've seen the video, but the first one was a uh, a runaway truck that just barely missed the school bus. Stop! No! Oh, 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 And then another 
I've seen mm-hmm. another video from a, another TikToker showing the school bus like smack like smacking the 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 flatbed uh truck right behind and that that was like a scary yeah. situation too. So what what kind of situations yeah. what kind of situations you been in uh as a school bus driver and for what it for Georgia was it for Georgia County or for what what county Yeah it, what it county? was um I worked for Sumter County Sumter County schools down in uh, America Georgia so I'm I'm, cause I'm technically I'm still currently employed there as a part-time driver but um the most scariest thing I could say out of the four years that I worked there was uh oh uh, that was uh, one one afternoon. Uh, all of us was leaving from the ninth grade academy, which is the old Sutton County Comprehensive High School, and we were all heading across town over to the other high school, which is Old America's High. So we're all single file. We had some drivers that had to come through there and make some stops along the way. So as it all cleared out and we're all starting to get a good flow going, one of our drivers, he had to basically make a turn to go into a neighborhood to basically um, start delivering some of his kids before he went over to America's High. So as he was making his turn, there was this one car coming northbound on Southerfield and ran smack dab into the side of the bus, which it really terrified me real bad because I didn't know what was going to happen with those kids, and then I didn't know if the people in the car were okay. But overall, it... it um, the kids were fine. I mean, it damaged the bus pretty bad, but they were able to get that bus fixed and back out and into rotation. And the people in the car, they were basically charged with um, reckless driving and uh, endangerment to children. All right, that's that's uh, that that's that's crazy right there. But I'm glad uh, I'm glad yeah. everything worked out for you. So. You 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 enrolled in the technical college to 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 go and upgrade your license to an A, and you you still mm-hmm. and you say you still had to go through the uh, the five week program. Is is your license restricted or are you or they unrestricted? My license are currently unrestricted. I have the only restrictions I have on my license is basically corrective lenses. But as far as like the automatic restriction, I do not have those on there. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That and that's a good thing to try and go and get. The, if you guys got like restricted license, try to try to try to get them unrestricted. As far as you know, getting a better you know position out here. Even though all these trucking right. companies are going the way of the automatics, there are going to be a few companies that still going to have manual. So you know, you might want right. to. You, you might want to. You know, concentrate on that. So, bro, man, you're. Oh, go ahead. Uh-huh. Go, go ahead. Oh, uh, and, and, and so, like I was, uh, like, like last night, I was on TikTok with a few drivers last night, and I was told them, like, hey, if you're going, if you're going to go to school, me personally, I recommend you to go to a, a independent driving school or a trade school, like a technical college, and get your license compared to a company because those companies are going to basically rush you through it, and then you're basically not going to have the full knowledge that you would have if you go to a technical college. Because people with technical colleges and the independent driving schools, they're going to take their time with you. So they feel like that you're not ready to go, then they're going to make you stay. Now, I understand there may be a, a little financial aspect of it where you may have to go through the company, but that's just me personally. I recommend everyone to go to a trade school or an independent driving school. Well, you know, I went to Tri C Community uh, Community College. You know, they they Tri C Trucking right. Academy. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't want to be up under contract. I mean, there's several different reasons right. why why you should choose the route that you go in order to, you know, in order to get your CDL. But my route was simply because of the fact that I, I didn't want to be segregated to 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 one company for over a year or or two years or something two like years. that. So I decided yeah. to pay out of pocket and get you know and open up my opportunities a little bit more than just being than just being boggled down to one company and that's what's up that's some good advice right, too. right. all right man so tiktok bro you uh you, you of course you got a tiktok that's where i found you from 
Uh, I me, oh, pers- yes, me personally, I'm not a fan of the app, so I don't do that much content on it. But I do come across, right. again, uh, I do come across interesting uh, people such as yourself, man. So again, thank you for coming on. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that oh, yeah, no uh, you mentioned that you was a trainer, and you told the story of uh, of of the time that you was a trainer. So. Mm-hmm. At Swift, how long was it before they actually asked you to be a trainer? I was there. I was there at uh, Swift about six months, and then so that's when I got a, a fleet message from my uh, a message from my fleet manager, and he was like, "Hey, are you interested in training?" And so I asked him, "I said, like, well, what's the benefits and what's the financial lucrative uh, the financial uh, gains from being?" A trainer. So he basically broke it down to me. He's like, hey, yeah, you're going to basically run as a team, but also when that driver comes off of your truck, goes onto his own truck, you'll earn like two cents per mile of all the miles that they drive. And there's some other things I actually forgot about. I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a try because I like to help people out. I mean, I know I'm still new in the game, but I like to share the knowledge that I've learned to other people to help them out in their career. Now let me so stop. Let, let, me stop let me let me stop you right there, bro. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> because I I I was with you as Express, and they asked me within three months of the time that I was working for them. But let me ask you this, bro. I and and you just and you just put a key word out there. You you want to you know teach people what you have learned. But my G, you really think you learned anything mm-hmm. in six months, man, to pass on to somebody? I don't know if we can cuss on him, but fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, and I don't understand, you know, back then, you know, when, when my fleet manager asked me to do it, you know, they was telling me about the financial mm-hmm. aspects of it, but they wasn't telling me the, you know, the real world aspects of it, like what type of people right. I'd be training, what type of what type of attitudes I'll be running into and all like that. But still, oh my God, I, asked, don't even get me started on those. I asked them, I was like, well, look, uh, three months is really, is really not enough time for me to, to, to train somebody, you know, the knowledge that I have, because I'm still out here learning. Right. So, but yeah, it's, it's basically like the blind leading the blind. Right. But you, you decided to, uh, go into training uh, I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm going to ask the same question that was asked in the in the TikTok. So, what are mm-hmm. what what are some ways uh from the beginning where the relationship is kind of good, kind of fresh, all the way up until the point that you need to discard that trainer or, or that trainee off your truck? What are what are what are uh things that would get a trainee put off of a trainer's truck? Okay, so I'm going to give you the G-rated version of that. Basically, they don't want to keep the truck clean, doesn't want to listen, doesn't want to basically follow by the truck rules, um, basically want to do their own thing, meaning, like, if I sit here and say, hey, let's do some backing practices or let's go over these macros so I can teach these macros, you'd be like, nah, I want to go part, I want to go club. Nah, it's time for you to go. Playing on your phone is an automatic. You got to go. Um, what are some other things? Uh Constantly or intentionally being late on delivery, yeah, yeah, out of there. Don't want to shower, yeah, out of there. So those were like some big pet peeves to where those, those were the ground rules that I set on my truck. And I also told them like the first day on my truck, you're not driving. First day, you're gonna sit in the passenger seat, you're gonna chop it up. I'm gonna teach the rules and regulations of the truck and what I expect out of you and what you expect out of me. The second day, you're on your own. And the whole time, I'm in the passenger seat catching me up now. I'm like, thank God somebody in the truck with me. But those those were one of the key reasons why I was supposed to kick a student off of my truck. All right. The and, main one was they playing on that phone. All right. And with that said, man, it, it, those, so, those sound like some pretty good, you know, some pretty good ground rules. I mean, you know, playing on the phone. Mm-hmm. You, want the, you want the trainee to, to, to be attentive. You you want the trainee to you know to to be focused on the reason why he's out there in the first place, you know. But right. what 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 are some of the trainees that you can't? Well, how how many have you trained? 
how many have you trained? Uh, total out of the year and a half, I was there five. Three of them went local, and two was OCR. All right, so out of the five that you uh, that well, those sound like five successes. So, what was the one? What was the one that you uh, that you had to issue with that you had to leave in Chicago? Uh, that was my last student before I left Swift. Uh, his name was Albert, forty-five year old gentleman. So he gets on my truck. I pick him up out of Atlanta because that's the yard I was out of. So I pick him up out of Atlanta. I, I break down the ground rules and everything to him. He was all right with it. So as time went on, I guess he thought the age difference between me and him made him superior. Meaning I'm, a, I'm only about 22, 23 years old. He's in his 40s. He think he can tell me what to do. Bruh, you must forget your job is in my hands. I'm trying to train you and teach you the swift way and teach you the way that I run things on here that basically you can basically implement in your trucking career. So we, um, I'll never forget it. We, we head up to Gary, Indiana, and we park at the Swift Yard there in Gary, Indiana. So if you got any listeners on here that drive a Swift and know the Gary Yard, y'all know exactly what yard I'm talking about. So we pull in. And so usually when I take my students to the yard, I always tell them, like, hey, let's get some back and practices in, put you in different scenarios, or, or let's learn the macros so you can understand, like, what the macros are for and what they're meaning are. This man had the audacity to sit here and tell me, man, I ain't got time for that, man. I'm going to go hang out with my cousin I'm over in Chicago. But we'll deal with that some other time. I'm like, bro, are you serious? So you really think going out, hanging out with your cousin in Chicago is more important than your job? All right, go right on here. Go right on here. But I promise you, you leave. Don't think about getting back in this truck. So he thought I was blessed. So I basically had to call his bluff. So he left. So the next morning, they sent me a dispatch. Mind you, this is about 6.30 in the morning. He still isn't back. So I put my collection, pack up all this stuff, took it right in the terminal. Called down to Atlanta and said, hey, my student went out last night. I told him not to do it. He decided to do it anyway. I need another student. and route me back down to Atlanta. So they said, okay, deliver that load. We'll route you back down. We'll get him a bus ticket home, and we'll deal with the rest. All right, cool. And so off I went. I don't have time for that. Because if I'm sitting tr- if I'm trying to sit here and help you out and teach you the tricks of the trade over what I know how to handle things, then you think people will basically be like, Okay, yeah, I maybe I need to learn about this. I need to put this part and stuff to the side until I actually get this knocked out. Then once I get this knocked out, I can go do my own thing. No. So folks are still gonna go out and do what they wanna do. Wow, this man gets on. This man gets on your truck thinking he's about to have a party. Love told you to. Yeah. Told you to like, yo. Well, when I get back, you know, we can get back at it. But sir, sir, I mean, no. you know, we're we're all about we're we're all about getting you trained to drive. You know, the swift way, not to go to, not to go to your cousin's house and party all night. You know what I'm saying? Or what, go to every major that? city and party. Yeah. Man. Exactly. Because if you, cause like I said, a lot of these new drivers, I'm like, if you got that mindset of thinking, oh, you're just going to go to every city and party, or you're going to come in and try to make a quick dollar, you're instantly going to fail. You're instantly going to fail, man, because you can't come out here thinking like that. You got to basically get out here and grind, and I mean, hustle and grind hard to make a living out here. Because, like some of the other drivers say on TikTok, this is not, this is not a, like a life, uh, I mean, not a lifestyle. This is not a career. This is a lifestyle. Because you really got to have that mentality to actually deal with the bullshit that we go through out here on a daily basis. Now you don't know, see right there. See, see right there. That's the difference. That's that's the that's that's the black wall difference right there, man. Because see, a lot of these millennials mm-hmm. that's coming in here, a lot of these people that's that's in their like forties or thirties or forty five at that matter coming in in twenty twenty two, they're not coming in here seeing this as a as a lifestyle as it's supposed to be because they're not come they're not coming in here just to say oh okay well I'm, I'm planning on being out months at a time and then come back home for like one or two days they they mindset ain't like that no more man they coming out here no, they see they're not, they're not. They, they seeing all of the tiktok influencers making this industry look all easy and 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 happy happy joy joy with the peanut butter in the middle 
And, you know, they make right. it look all like that. So when when a millennial or somebody that's in this at this age in this in this time frame sees that they think they can say, oh, OK, well, this is only going to be a career for me. I only want to come in here, uh, uh, go home when I want, uh, do this, that and the third when I want and knowing that you can't do it. it it's impossible. Right. So they they so don't see, those they are the don't ones that want to come over the road. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, go ahead. So those are the ones that want to come over the road. Those are the ones that want to come over the road and then be like, you know what, man, I'm gonna go home this weekend. I'm gonna go club. I'm gonna go party. And they could be way out in California, living dog on Florida somewhere. Then they can want to get mad. Oh man, y'all can't get me on. I told y'all want to be home the weekend. Or you didn't give us enough time to basically plan it for you to be home. And they don't mean that, man. I need to get home. I'm trying to go party. And then you're like, man, you know what? Forget me, come. But I quit. I quit. And, that, and that's how a lot of them think. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't be sitting here thinking you can go home every weekend, especially as an OCR driver. You got to sit out here and grind, man, because the less time you're out here on the road, the less money you're going to make. And that's why I try to tell everybody that comes out here, like, look, when you're starting out to get your experience, you're going to have to go OCR and you're going to have to go to a mega carry. So if you think you're going to go home every weekend and party and live it up every weekend like you do at home now, you in the wrong industry, bro. Now you know what that growing that that since you mentioned the going home part, man. Yeah, I had my issues maybe about maybe about two weeks ago, man. I was uh, on my way home, and unfortunately the truck broke down, and I was stuck at the Loves. Uh, I, I think it was in Arkansas. I can't remember offhand. Was it Arkansas or Tennessee? It was one. Of, it was one of the two states. I know I was in between one of them. But I had to I, I had to mm -hmm. post up over the I had to post up over the weekend because the the truck broke down and I couldn't get home. But that's trucking. Well, you we'll know? see right there. You had yeah. You had no control over that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have you have no control over that. Exactly. All right, man. So with Swift during your time with Swift, you you say you've been there for how long? About what? About a year, year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. And your whole time with with Swift, you 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 was a trainer for him. I want to say the last year I was there. So I did my training for. I did my training for a mentor back in I want to say December of December of eleven was it? No, December no, it's December of twelve. I, I can't remember. I know it was somewhere around the mid to late twelve, early thirteen was when I did my uh, my training for for a mentor down in Laredo. All right. So so being that you you know you train like I want to say six, but five successes. Um, have mm -hmm. is is any one of those females? And what's your and what's your stance on training females? Well, when I went through training down in Laredo, they, they, it was just me and another guy. And so he told us, he said, it's up to y'all, but I recommend y'all do male only. Because he was telling us a backstory of how this one male driver was training his female, and she kind of made, made like bogus claims and everything against him, and they were still going through legal battles about that. So they kind of put a little fear in and so all the students that I trained, the five that I trained, were all male. And then before I left, if they offered me a uh, female student, I was like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm good with that. They were like, yeah, we understand that, but you're the only trainer here. Can you can you please take her? I'm like, nah, I can't do that, man. Now, I'm not going to sit here and end up like Buddy, sitting here catching a bogus, uh, a bogus sexual harassment charge just because I got a female in the truck and we have a little squabble about something. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with training with females. It's just, I just, I can't do it. Because you never know, you may get that one that may get a certain type of connection with you. And then you basically be like, nah, that ain't what I want. We here for this. And then she throws a little bogus charges and stuff. Well, you know, I always say, you know, I always say, you know, shout out to the females that's getting into this industry. But. Yeah, you, down, man. you know the, the 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 camaraderie between the uh t between the male and the female trainee train uh trainer trainee needs to be that professional. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now I can understand if there's 
you know, some sparks that might happen. But you first thing first, first and foremost, the goal is to get is to get your trainee trained so they can go and get the experience. That's the goal. Right. You know, and besides, you know, looking at it this way, the female trainee ain't coming out here, to, ain't, ain't coming out here to look for no damn love. I'm sure she can look for love anywhere she goes, but spending right. up, spending it upwards of five thousand to maybe about ten k or more, I, you know, your your thought process should not be coming out here to look for a man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So right, yeah, I agree. I agree. It should but, be all about getting to that money. But if the, if there's sparks afterwards, then yeah, you know, probably pursue that. But right now, right. right now, I think that's the problem with some of these male trainers. They think they could get, you know, they could get a, a female on the truck and then the conversation turns from trying to train them to, so do you have a boyfriend? You know, how's your sex life? Yeah. And things of that nature, which makes, you know, which makes for a pretty weird experience, in my opinion. But Right, right. And, see, it, it, and that's what they need to basically distinct, to basically separate pleasure from work. Because with a female, if I was training a female, I'd be like, look, I'm here strictly just to train. We can hang out. We can just do anything as partners and like try to like build a relationship connection. Nah, it's not going to happen because I'm not going to sit here and try to catch a charge or something just because you were upset about something. I'm just trying to cover my behind, man. All right. So let me ask you this. Do, do you have a, do you, are you in a relationship? Uh, do you, you know, are you married or anything like that? I, I, no, I recently just got out of a relationship about a month ago. All right, so if you because she felt like I she felt like I stayed away from home too long, so <laughs> I was is, over. It is what it is, <laughs> man. But if if exactly. y'all if y'all two were still together, you know, and you were <laughs> and you were to train a female uh, uh, trainee, would would you <laughs> would you think to be you know to be on a respectable? Well, of course, on the respectable side, you'll call your lady up and be like, yo. You know, I got this female on a truck. Her name is yada, 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 yada. She's going to be out with me for maybe about three weeks or something like that. Do you think your 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 lady friend or your relationship will have any issues with you uh, training a female? No. In, in my opinion, no. Because see, like with me, I'm the type of guy, I'm, I'm open. I, I basically let them know everything from jump. Like, hey, this is my skill how many kids I got, this is what I do. So if she knew that I was a trainer when we first got together, I tell her, look, I train male and female students. So if I get a female on, don't get mad. I'm going to let you know she's going to be on here. It's just part of the job. So yeah, I'll let her know from jump. So I don't know how she would take it personally, but I mean, at the same time, I look at it, like if I see her and tell you I'm a trainer, I train male and female students, why would you get mad? Especially if I'm sitting here telling you and I'm on the phone with you when I have a break in between. Because I'm not going to be on the phone with you all day, every day while she's in the truck driving. Because I got to basically guide her and help her out throughout the entire process. That's what's up. Now, you said, uh, unfortunately, you, you just recently got out of a relationship because she felt that you was out here on the road. So I, I'm going to assume she wasn't a truck driver. No, she wasn't. All right. So now that you've been in a relationship with a, with, with a non-truck driver, what what do you think that you could possibly has uh salvage the 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 relationship or it it just came to a point that yeah i i, I it's a good I, idea that we leave i mean i could have salvaged it because the way she wanted the way she wanted me to she basically wanted me to find a local girl around the house now i could have done that but at the same time like whenever i did make time for her and i planned time for her she would always come up with little bogus excuses. Oh, like, oh, I know, I got to work at this time. Oh, oh, well, I got this going on, or I got that going on. Or when I come home and hit her up, no response. I went here for her until after I leave. So I'm like, man, I got to choose less or two either. Either find me something that have me home every day, and then if everything goes downhill here, I'm gonna regret myself for basically coming off the road, or over the road and just cut everything off with her. So I just decided to cut everything off. You know, I just came across this uh across this TikToker. 
She says that uh, she don't even. Wa- she says she don't even want to be in a relationship. She just want to fuck. <laughs> so it's just be better for her to just uh, <laughs> just to be single. So I mean, I you know I kind of look at that and I'm like, I'm like you know that I'm like yeah that would probably be the best course of action, especially you know you being the yeah. truck driver. And it's kind of it's kind of hold it's kind of hard to hold down a relationship. So yeah, you might as well just be, you know, single. And what and and why not? If if that's all your if if that's all your thing is just to fuck, you, nah, you just gotta make sure exactly. You just gotta exactly. make sure who you who who you going to bed with is 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 you know what I'm saying. But anyway, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just saying, you know, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, trucking, you know, trucking and, and, and relationships, I want to say relationships with non trucking, uh, females or males does put a, a, a strain on the relationship being that, that you are going for, you know, a lengthy period right. of time. So yeah, it really does. I mean, it did the same thing with my son's mother because me and my son's mother, uh, we were together for four years. And so it's like right after he was born in April of 19, that's when things started going downhill. Because, um, yeah, I know I needed to be home more, but see, in the, around the Atlanta metro area, there really wasn't any trucking companies or People that were basically paying the same thing that I'm paying that I'm making now with the current company I'm with. So I tried to basically explain that to her. And so when I started taking more time off of my job to be home, and dropping and dropping, and then I started getting behind in bills. And so that added on to basically me not being home. So I told her, I said, look, you know, you know. I'm an old road truck driver. I even been begging for the past three and a half years to come out on the road with me. You won't do it. So, I mean, if you come out on the road with me and I'm already taking care of all the bills at the house, everything will be straight. But nah, she was one of those, I got to have my me time. I got to go out and party, smoke weed, chill with my friends whenever I get ready. So, that really blew that up. And then not only that, she was running a man in and out of my house while I was gone. So that Jeez. really is put the icing on the cake there. Yeah. You know what? I, I think I, I think a female that's that's a non truck driver coming out here, may, maybe like maybe the first couple of weeks or something like that, the 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 thing would be, yeah, you know, I got my pussy right here, I got my D right here, and we get it on at the <laughs> shipper receiver and all that other good stuff. But right. I, it will it will probably become more so of homesickness for her and then if that's gonna if that's the case then it probably might turn out to be a problem with you so that that's a problem that you definitely probably avoided bro yeah i mean with with that you gotta make sacrifices exactly exactly well huckle b man i really do appreciate you coming on and uh stepping up in the building and chopping it up with me i really do appreciate it you know what i'm saying oh yes sir yes sir all right thank you for being on man hey guys you guys know that the best conversation starts here on the locked out men podcast show so if you guys want to come on or have anything y'all want to talk about you hit me up to one six six zero zero two zero nine zero y'all can do that i really do appreciate it make sure y'all give me the hbo special by hitting that like button subscribe button and that thank you button for the support of the channel until next time everybody we will get back with you with another guest or whatever the case 